the kinetic molecular theory of gases. Okay, so before we can really understand kinetic theory, we need to think about the microscopic basis for gas pressure. So in other words, we're going to think about pressure in terms of what's happening with molecules inside a container. Okay? Now, inside this container or any container inside the room or wherever we are, gas molecules are in constant random motion. Okay? And when these gas molecules collide with the walls of, the, of a container, then they create a pressure. Okay? And these collisions are distributed over a certain area, and that basically fits the definition of pressure, which is a force over a unit area. So the force from the collision over the unit area, which would be the walls of the container. Now, suppose we decrease the volume of the container, but we keep the temperature and the moles of gas constant. Okay, so let's think about what happens to the pressure. Now we know from Boyle's law that the pressure increases when we decrease the volume. Okay, but let's think about it on a microscopic level. Okay, and so if we make our volume of the container smaller, there's going to be less area that those get collisions are distributed over. Okay, so more collisions per unit area, and in that sense, the pressure is going to increase, and we can see that the pressure is related to molecular motion. Okay, so what about temperature? All right, so let's just remind ourselves about kinetic energy as we get going here. Okay, so kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared, so you know mass in kilograms velocity squared. Okay, and kinetic molecular theory says that the average velocity of gas molecules increases with increasing temperature. Okay, so as we increase the temperature, then the average velocity of our molecules will increase. Now, when I say average velocity, I am talking about the average in a large group of molecules, gas molecules. So basically, some of the molecules will be slower, some of them will be faster, and then many of them will be clustered around this average velocity. Okay? So it's an average, it's not an absolute. They don't all have the same velocity. Now, since the average velocity of the gas molecules increases as we increase the temperature, then it's reasonably easy to imagine that the number of collisions with the walls of the container increases as well. Okay, so if they're moving faster, they're going to hit more often. They're going to cover more territory inside that container. So as the temperature increases, the average velocity increases, the number of collisions increases. Okay, so more energy through momentum is transferred to the walls of the container, okay? We increase the temperature, the average velocity goes up, the number of collisions goes up, okay? And so the amount of energy that is transferred to the walls of the container increases, okay? So this one's a little bit harder to imagine, but basically temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the gas molecules, okay? Now, the kinetic theory of gases derives relationships between pressure, volume, temperature. So these are macroscopic properties of gases. So these are things that we can measure. And basically, what individual molecules or a collection of individual molecules are doing in the gas, which we would call that the microscopic behavior. So in the end, kinetic theory of gases provides a molecule level definition of temperature as a measure of the kinetic energy of the gas molecules. Okay? So, so basically the definition of temperature according to the kinetic theory of gases is the average kinetic energy of the gas molecules. Okay? And that's a microscopic definition of temperature. Okay, so let's go through some of the assumptions in the kinetic theory of gases. And you do have to know these. Alright? One, this only works if the gas is ideal. Okay, so the molecules don't interact with each other. So part of the as one assumption in this model is that the gas is ideal. Another assumption is that the collisions of the molecules with the walls of the container are elastic. So that means they just bounce off like billiard balls and no energy is lost in that collision. Okay, so they're not sticky at all. They don't 
stick momentarily to the walls of the container when they collide with the wall, they bounce back in a different direction with no energy lost. Gas molecules are also moving constantly and they're moving in random directions and they have a distribution of speed. So that's another way to say what I was saying earlier that they don't ha all have the exact same velocity. They have some of them are slower, some of them are faster and that's called a distribution of speeds. But overall they have an average velocity. So if we measure a bunch of them then we're going to get some average velocity for these gas molecules. And the average kinetic energy of these gas molecules is proportional to the temperature. Okay, So the temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of these gas molecules. Now the kinetic theory of gases only involves kinetic energy. So no potential energy. All right. So this is why our collisions are elastic. So we're saying that nothing interacts with anything else. Gas molecules don't interact with each other. They're ideal gases. And we're saying that the collisions are completely elastic. They bounce off and they don't lose any energy in the collision. Now, this is going to change when we talk about real gases as opposed to ideal gases. But we haven't talked about those yet. When you're dealing with a real gas, then there will be potential energy in that picture. Now molecules at the same temperature have the same average kinetic energy regardless of their identity. Okay, So think about that. It doesn't matter what you have, if it's an ideal gas, whatever temperature it is, all of those gas molecules are going to have the same average kinetic energy. All right. Now if we want to compare velocities, then we're going to have to remember that this kinetic energy is related to both mass and velocity of the gas molecules. According to the kinetic theory of gases, the average kinetic energy per mole of gas can be calculated as 3 halves times the gas constant R times the temperature in Kelvin. Okay. And this is going to give us energy in joules. All right. And notice, again, according to this equation, look, this is a constant. R is a constant. This is just a number. All right. So the kinetic energy is directly related to the temperature, period. OK. And now this gas constant R, that's another thing I want to point out, is what I call the energy R. OK. Now, of course, remember, R can have many different units, okay? And so this is the R, the gas constant, that we're going to use when we're dealing with energy problems, okay? So 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. But, of course, notice it's the, it is a gas constant and Kelvin, okay? So we have to be in Kelvin for any gas calculations, all right? So this just states, so joule is an energy unit, the abbreviation is capital J, and then sometimes you need to make conversions, all right? So one joule is equal to one kilogram times meter squared over second squared. And if we go up here, and actually if we go, I'll wait until we get to the next slide when we talk about the kinetic energy, but here's the mass, and then here's the velocity squared. Okay? Now, we can calculate the root mean square speed, so that's a type of average speed. And this comes out of that previous equation as well, okay? I'm not going to go into the details of that, but basically 3 times R, okay, so again, constants times temperature divided by the molar mass of the gas, okay? Now the molar mass is going to be in kilograms, not grams. Okay, and that has to do with joules, kilograms, meter squared over second squared. Okay, the temperature is in Kelvin, all right, and so with this, we can actually calculate the root mean square speed of a collection of gas molecules. Okay, so we're not going to do a calculation yet, we'll save that for another video, but let's just go ahead and reason through. Suppose we have a sample of oxygen and hydrogen gas molecules in the same flask at the same temperature. Okay, so they have the same volume, and the same temperature. Which type of gas molecules have a higher average velocity?
okay? So think about that, okay? They're at the same temperature. Which ones have a higher average velocity? Okay, so there's a couple of things you want to ask yourself. So does oxygen or hydrogen gas have a greater molar mass? Okay, and if the temperature is constant, which means the average kinetic energy is the same for both gases. How could you relate that average velocity to the molar mass? Okay, and we can reason it out using this kinetic energy equation, of course. Okay, so here's the mass and the velocity. Okay, okay so oxygen has a larger molar mass. All right. Now we're looking for which type of gas molecules have a higher average velocity. Okay. So oxygen has a larger molar mass. Hydrogen has a smaller molar mass. Okay. So how can we relate this RMS speed to this molar mass? Okay. Kinetic energy is constant. Okay. As the mass increases then the velocity has to decrease, right, if we have to have the same number right here, okay? So the kinetic energy has to be held constant, so if we increase the molar mass of the gas molecules, then the average velocity has to go down, okay? So increasing mass, decreasing velocity, okay? Heavier things go slower at the same kinetic energy. So in this case, then, to answer our question, the hydrogen molecules would have a higher average velocity since they have a smaller molar mass and they're both at the same kinetic energy, or the same average kinetic energy. Now, we could also have used our root mean square speed equation, okay? This is much easier to see. Now, of course, we're going to be at the same temperature, so that's constant, R is constant, 3 is obviously a constant, okay? So we, we can see that the root mean square speed is inversely proportional to the molar mass, okay? So if we increase the molar mass, then the RMS speed decreases, and we get the same answer.